few weeks ago, Robert from Diamond Core Tools got in touch and asked whether they could send me a box of tools to test and try out and to see if there was anything in particular I liked. And for the sake of transparency, I want to make it clear that this was not initially a quid pro quo deal and this video you're watching wasn't born out of some contract and hopefully this unboxing and first impressions video will shed some light on these tools and I hope it'll give you an idea of what I'm looking for when I try out new trimming tools amongst other things as really I had no idea what was in this box but there are so many parcels inside so thanks Robert and to everybody else at Diamond Core Tools. I tend to not have many adverts in my videos and I don't do any sort of sponsored content as generally all the offers I do get are from companies that don't really have any relation to pottery and therefore for those watching I feel as if an arbitrary VPN advert would feel so out of place so I avoid 99% of those opportunities and when a pottery related one does come along it feels like a very rare treat. Right, now that all that's out of the way I'll begin the unboxing. The first is a box that contains numerous boxes of replacement blades, which is one of the good things about their tools, as it means once the metal edge has worn down to nothing, you can fit one of these and you don't have to throw away the wooden handle, which you sort of have to do with many of the very standard trimming tools on the market. Those of you who've been watching my videos for a while will know that trimming pots is a significant part of my making process, and I'm practically always on the lookout for tools that might aid that. And so I have a feeling if many of these boxes do contain trimming tools, I'm going to be spoiled for choice. Now these might look like trimming tools, but they're actually handle extruders. And they have a very clever little mechanism in way of this bent piece of curved metal, as it means as this is pulled through a block of clay, it'll create a nice groove on the top, mimicking quite well the groove I normally pull with the tip of my thumb when making handles. Whoa. <laughs> now these are what I'm talking about, sharp trimmers with the added bonus of having my name laser cut into them. I love sharp turning tools, so I really can't wait to use these stainless steel blades. The handles are lovely and comfortable too, which is actually a really important factor as sometimes there are days when I have my hand tightly wrapped around one of these for eight or so hours. What's next? Spinners, a similar tool to the nylon contraption I usually use on the top of pots when trimming them. I think you place this on top of the pot and then you position your finger in that pivot and push down. This helps to keep the pot pinned in place as you work and these come with hash marks all the way around the outside which I imagine come in really handy if you need to measure out different segments for carving, fasting or decorating. Now these look like my kinds of tools. Both of these are really sharp. I think these ones with the padded foam handles are meant for hand carving pots, but I don't think that will stop me from trying them out as turning tools. Next, we've got a set of flexible diamond sanding blocks. Now, generally, I don't sand the bottom of my stoneware pieces that much, as I don't like to remove the flash colour that can appear on the stoneware body when reduction fired. With that being said, in the coming year I plan on using porcelain more and more, and for those pieces, as the clay doesn't really change too much during the firing, I like sanding them to be exceedingly smooth, which, in combination with these, a few more items that come later are going to be really helpful. Next we've got a box of stainless steel metal kidneys, and this shape in particular, with its really sharp serrated edge, will be great for roughening up the patches I attach my handles onto. Next comes a box of hard wood ribs for throwing and shaping pots and I love the solution to grip on one side being this cut lattice as opposed to a hole that travels all the way through the tool. I've always quite liked sturdier wooden tools like this when throwing the walls of larger pots so hopefully over the coming months as that is my aim to make some larger vessels it should be quite useful. And next are two more boxes of Florian Gadsby engraved trimming tools with even more different shapes of blade for me to test out. And I hope with all these new trimming tools I might find the particular shape I've been looking for for years now to trim the simple shape that encircles my foot rings on the bowls I make. But there's still a few more things I need to unbox before I can begin the testing. Next is what may have actually ended up being the most useful tool out of all of these and the most satisfying to unpack. It's a disc made from a sticky, rubbery material and they're made to place on the wheel head to fasten pots onto, or bats even, instead of using clay or mechanical arms like Giffen grips to secure your pots in place. And I'll show you how I use this a little later on. 
And finally, in these last two boxes are some diamond grinding discs. You place these onto the wheel head, wet them, and then push the base of your pot onto it as you spin it quickly. And these are going to be so useful for sanding smooth the bases of my porcelain pots. And here's the other, slightly larger version, which has a wider grinding area. I can't quite believe how many tools there were in there, and I can't wait to use so many of these. I'll of course include various links down below, and thanks again to everybody at Diamond Core Tools. Opening this really did feel like Christmas, and as a total tool addict, I can't wait to try these out and to see which ones might fit into my repertoire of tools, although I feel like I might be a little bit spoilt for choice, and I'm eager to see how these will work, even if they aren't really intended to turn pots with. Right, I think I'll begin by testing the sanding equipment. This porcelain cup has a relatively rough base, and ideally I'd like it to be as smooth as glass. So, let's see how we go. I'm hoping as these are quite wide and heavy, that they'll stay in place simply with their own weight. So I pour some water over the surface, and then push the mug firmly down against it. And even that has really taken the edge off it. Next I'll try with the finer grit. If I were grinding the bases of lots of pots, I would definitely secure the disc in place properly. But it's so much easier using a tool like this when you really need to remove quite a lot of material as compared to one of these smaller blocks. Yet these are all really useful and I can't wait to use them over the coming year. Now while you can't feel the difference, you can hear it, as it doesn't sound nearly quite so rough as it did earlier. Although I have learned one thing just from using this quickly, and that's that I need to trim the bases of my porcelain pots to be perfectly flat and not bowed in ever so slightly, as I had to grind away really rather a lot of clay on this piece to make it perfectly level. And now let's move on to the good stuff and test out these trimming tools. And as is customary now, I'll be testing these on some medium bowls, which I've had wrapped up tightly in plastic for a few days, to keep them at the perfect leather hard state. Now, first of all, I'm going to be testing these tools without the rubber mat. That way I can really get a feel for the trimming tools in the environment I'm most used to. So I secure the bowl in place with three lumps of soft clay and then I score a line into the base which measures six centimeters across. And I'll test this simple curved blade first. It rips through the clay easily, although they're not quite as razor sharp as the tungsten carbide tools I normally use. They are though comfortable to hold and I feel as if I can really dig the blade in at the right angle for the clay to come off in nice long ribbons. Now for the foot, I'll switch to a blade that has a straight edge, and I'll define the actual foot portion of the bowl, and create this deep undercut. And this really might be the tool I was looking for to do this job, as really it's the corner of the tool which is so important, as I want something that can nestle right in this corner, and leave a nice surface both on the bowl portion and the foot portion, without me having to go constantly back and forth in order to correct it. The next step is to remove the clay from inside the foot ring, and for this part of the process, I found one of the tools to be exceedingly useful. And that was this one, which has a curved blade that comes to a sharp corner, which sort of perfectly matches the interior shape of my foot rings. So I imagine this tool is going to see rather a lot of use and the squared off nature of the handle means I can grip it really firmly as I push it into the firm leather hard clay. Occasionally, if you're using a tool that has a completely round handle, it can twist in your grip, especially when used very forcefully, and that's often when things catch or go wrong. So having more distinct angles to hold should keep things more stable overall. Once the turning's finished, I stamp the foot with my maker's mark, and then I just trim the very top again, as when I push my stamp into the clay, it does display some of that material upward. 
Overall, my experience with these is really positive, and I found that the shapes really worked for defining the foot and for digging out the footwell especially, as with my current set of tungsten carbide tools, I simply can't use them to hollow out the foot in such a way as when held vertically and inserted into that hollow, the blade's angle is just at the incorrect position for it to actually tear away the clay, but some of these trimmers do that job perfectly. Next it's time to test out the sticky bat, which I just placed onto the metal wheel head, pushed it down slightly, and then placed a wooden MDF bat on top of it. And even at this point it felt really stuck down, but let's see if I can throw a bowl on top of it. And as you can see in this sped up footage, the bat itself stays completely stationary throughout this process, which I didn't expect. So I'll definitely purchase the wider sticky bat as it'll make throwing wider dishes and taller forms so much easier. And when it comes to detaching the bat, it just lifts away as if it wasn't even stuck. Which is quite amazing, as usually for this process I throw a clay bat onto which the MDF is placed. And if these eliminate that step, then I can't tell you how excited I am for the amount of time that'll save. And now finally for the part I was really looking forward to, and that was trimming with the bowl placed directly on this sticky pad. Now obviously it's quite difficult to tap center on such a sticky surface, so I had to lift the bowl up and place it down a few times to get it into the right position. But before trimming the underside, I just wanted to double check the interior form, and as the base is relatively narrow, that's easy to tap center. And so I knocked it into the middle and ran a rounded kidney over the curve in the inside, as there was just a slight irregularity, a slight bump really, towards the middle. And with that fixed and the bowl staying in place, I flipped the bowl back over, tap centered it as best I could, which does sort of work, but I think the pad is just skidding along with it, but it all seemed to hold in place regardless. I then scored my measurement into the base, and then I used one of the carving tools, which isn't specifically made for trimming. It definitely tore through the clay, but obviously on a wider expanse like this, I don't think it's particularly useful. And if anything, if I do use them in the future for turning, it'll be for finishing those very crisp, small portions of my pots, like ridges that encircle the waist of my jars and mugs, or for refining the sharp rim on larger pieces. With my left hand, I'm pushing down quite firmly from above, which I think is absolutely necessary when trimming using a pad like this, as you need that slight downward pressure to keep the piece pinned on the sticky surface. But once again, I was surprised by just how easily the bowl stayed in place as I worked, as I really do apply quite a lot of pressure with the tool as I sink the blade into the clay. Once I've got rid of all those small grooves left by the carving tool, and I've trimmed this outer curve to the shape I like, then I'll begin refining the actual foot itself. And I found that this tool, with the slightly smaller blade, is almost the perfect size for trimming these facets that encircle my feet. So I think this trimmer, in combination with the other one, will definitely be tools that are going to see a lot of use. To trim the foot, I begin by flattening the top. I do this to remove the wiring off texture and to obviously make the bowl sit level when it's placed the right way up. I then begin hollowing out the excess clay from inside the foot, diving in with the sharp corner of this trimmer, which I first push into the middle and then in a very controlled manner, I drag the blade out. It's extraordinarily easy when trimming like this for your trimming tool to be snagged by the clay and dragged around with it. So as it's plunged in and pulled across, I'm practically holding the turning tool with all my might whilst focusing on the metal edge following a totally straight line from the middle to the outer corner of the foot. And once all the other parts of the foot are neatened up to my liking, I stamp in my maker's mark, trim away the excess that's pushed up, and then as there's nothing that's holding the pot down, I can just easily lift it away. And all of this means that I'm less likely to damage the rim portion of the pot by squashing three lumps of soft clay around it. The only slightly tricky thing is wiping away all those specks of clay that fall onto the sticky surface, as I don't want those to embed themselves into the rim of the next bowl that's placed down to be trimmed. Overall though, I was impressed with these trimmers, and many of these shapes are going to be so useful in my practice. And I'm sure I'll find uses for all the other tools too, so thanks once again to Diamond Core Tools. Not only do they create such a wide array of trimming tool shapes, they also feel sturdy and well crafted, and I hope this video has also been useful to all of you who watch. There are so many tools on the market these days, and I don't think there are too many videos online that show different brands being unpacked and used. And I know that these days, before I purchase anything, I usually go straight to YouTube to watch a video about somebody's first impressions and to see their reaction firsthand, as buying tools online without seeing them in use or in the flesh can be a slightly nerve-wracking prospect. 
Anyhow, thank you for watching. If you've made it to the end, it means a lot. And I'll see you next week.